hope you're still having an amazing time with us. That you're still watching White in the Morning. And why should you change that channel? You really shouldn't. A very, 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 very big success to all the KCSE st candidates who are sitting for the exam starting today. And the ones who finished last week, KCP, hey, Kwa ground life ni different. And we're about to talk about adolescent rights, ETC. It's going to be a lit one. You you really you're not ready at white five on facebook at white two five four channel on twitter hashtag is why in the morning and why do i keep repeating these things because that's where you can get us so if you hear something on set that you want to contribute to or disagree with that is how you do it or you use our text line two zero one five four again two zero one five four start with y two five four my name is still valentine and i'm very excited hi guys good morning good morning. good morning welcome to the set would you like to introduce yourselves please let's start with the lady Yes, my name is Lucy Minayo. Mm. I'm an advocate. Mm -hmm. I work with the Center for Reproductive Rights, mm -hmm. um, mainly doing capacity building work at the center. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, sir? My name is Victor Rasu. Mm -hmm. I work uh, for Network for Adolescent and Youth of Africa, and mm -hmm. our work is around uh, policies and uh, legislation on sexual and reproductive health mm -hmm. and rights. In your field of work, where do you feel that the most rights are infringed on the youth. Like they don't completely know that they have rights or that their rights are being infringed continuously. Either they're being jailed or they come out being harmed in some way or the other. Is there like a specific sore spot? Mm -hmm. Which one would it be? So I would say that um, in the sexual and reproductive health rights sector, mm -hmm. we are still struggling to get an understanding, to secure an understanding that young people, mm -hmm. adolescents to be specific, mm -hmm actually have reproductive rights, mm -hmm. they actually have reproductive health needs, mm -hmm. and that there's an obligation that is imposed on the government mm -hmm. to ensure that they are able to realize these sexual and reproductive health rights mm -hmm. and needs. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was actually t uh, talking to Victor slightly a few minutes previously. Mm -hmm. I was asking, I was showing him a song that we had just played, because mm -hmm. in this era, the there have emerged certain songs that are very central, mm -hmm. to say the least, because we're on TV, national TV at that, I, I mm -hmm. must be diplomatic. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, is, is that something that you also look at? I, I assume if you're going to say something, then you're also doing it, you know? So is, is that something you guys speak on, touch on a little bit? I think if you look at it, uh, mm -hmm. access to information mm -hmm. is a right. Mm -hmm. But then uh, we have an instance where ad adults mm -hmm. begin defining for young people mm -hmm. what kind of information, what are the parameters of this kind of uh, information that the young people should uh, have access to. Mm -hmm. And uh, so why is this happening? Because we still remain a very conservative uh, society that mm -hmm. we don't want to discuss issues around sexual and productive health and rights mm -hmm. openly so that young people mm -hmm. have the, the correct mm -hmm. information and this information, they can use it to advance mm -hmm. their sexual rights. Mm -hmm. yeah, so young people are put in a cage mm -hmm. and then we don't talk about all these issues and all of a sudden they are, there's a section of young people who are now using songs to express themselves mm -hmm. and then as a society mm -hmm. we explode. Mm -hmm. So we need to ensure that continuously we are giving young people the inform the right information mm -hmm. that they need mm -hmm. and then they can be able to see what is right mm -hmm. uh, and what they want to advance mm -hmm. at whatever level mm -hmm. but they, this can only be done if we have a very enabling environment and supportive uh, legal environment mm -hmm. yeah apokaligo is important <laughs> it's it's very important okay yeah mm -hmm. If you had a bunch of people across the spectrum between 15 and 25 and you were beginning to give them, I, I want to say prep kind of, or training mm -hmm. in, in reproductive health or something, how, what would you start? What would, you be, what, what would be your first initiative to address? My ladies, okay, you need to do this, or is it hygiene, is it reproductive? What is it really in your master class? I think for me, the starting point for any intervention mm -hmm. that seeks to pass on information mm -hmm. is to try and understand where these people 
where, where they are at. What kind of information do they have? What kind of, kind of knowledge do they possess? Mm -hmm. And then using that to frame your training, to frame your intervention. Uh, and it's really is, the, and I, I, it's really because these young people are not homogenous. They are not the same. So you find young people in cities, in urban centers, uh, having more information. Young people in rural areas uh, being less informed. And so the starting point, point for me for any kind of training or intervention that's about passing information building knowledge, uh, the knowledge base of the other party will depend on where they are, uh, you know, at the moment. And that will essentially frame uh, your training, whether you will start with hygiene or you'll start with uh, sexual and reproductive health rights directly, or you'll start with just generally how adolescents are relating with their parents or, you know, how they are supported in the community to realize their rights mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have two very conflicting stories that have the same outcome. Mm -hmm. So in one scenario, you have two consensual adolescents. I want the adolescents to say me they're both under 18, high schoolers, you know, mm -hmm. maybe one is 16, one is 17. Mm -hmm. I want to believe, because imagining someone at 13 having intercourse, it's, it's hurting my head. So I'll just imagine 16. Mm -hmm. All right, so these two are, are dating. They, they're calling each other boyfriend and girlfriend. They say they're in love, and then they're having consensual sex and the lady falls pregnant. So she's pregnant, but she's not the age that is allowed even for just sex. Mm -hmm. And is that age of the constitution? Is there 18, right? Mm -hmm. And then another story where not too long ago, there was, I don't, I won't call it an outbreak because I really don't know what it was. At some point in the co Kilifi coastal area, there was an obscene number of pregnant girls who were doing KCPE. KCP, and I don't know if this was consensual. I imagine some were not and some were, but same result, they're pregnant now. Are we failing? Where are we failing as a society? Ah, did you see him do that? <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I don't want to cast aspersions on parents or teachers mm. or. I think we generally mm -hmm. have to take the blame for where adolescents are at the moment. Mm -hmm. And some of the issues were spoken to by Victor. Mm -hmm. So one, in our law, in our legal framework at the moment, mm -hmm. the age of consent is 18 years. Mm -hmm. So it's, the law doesn't explicitly state it's 18, but children mm -hmm. are recognized as not having capacity to consent mm -hmm. uh, to sexual conduct. So the assumption under the law or the interpretation is that any mi any minors that are having sexual conduct with each other mm -hmm. are engaging in illegal actions. So they, they are not they don't have the ability to consent. Now we know mm -hmm. then we we keep saying qua ground vitu ni different. Kilifi, that's mm. exactly what Kilifi is telling us. That mm -hmm. on the ground we actually have instances where young people are having sex with each other. Mm -hmm. They are agreeing to have sex with each other. They are making a rational decision mm -hmm. to do it. And um, unfortunately, the outcome, because they don't have information, they mm -hmm. don't have access to services, so they don't have contraception and all those things, mm -hmm. the outcome is pregnancies, the outcome is sometimes young people are being arrested mm -hmm. and um, imprisoned for engaging in illegal conduct. How long can you be imprisoned for? So it, um, up to a maximum of even 20 years. <gasps> Because it depends, the penalty depends on the age of the, of the person who was defiled. Uh -huh. So it's a problem. These mm -hmm. are the things that were being spoken to earlier about the legal environment and how supportive it is or not mm -hmm. of young people. And you can see mm -hmm. if we have a legal provision that puts the age of consent at 18, mm -hmm that places a caveat on young people having sex with each other, mm -hmm. then that, necessar that means that will permeate to the other sectors, yeah? Mm -hmm. Services will not be provided mm -hmm. because you're facilitating an illegal conduct. Mm -hmm. Or service providers will be afraid, will mm -hmm. be careful not to provide services because they can be arrested, mm -hmm. uh, and so on and so forth. So we, we have, it's a huge problem, and it starts with how, as a society, we view adolescents, mm -hmm. how we view minors. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't see them as complete individuals mm -hmm. with rights or with needs. Mm -hmm. with actually, if we just start with health needs, 
because you're graduating from this period when you did not, for example, with girls, mm -hmm. you did not have periods, mm -hmm. you now have periods. Those are all reproductive health things. Mm -hmm. You know, you're struggling with your body is changing, you're struggling with your mind, you're beginning to get attracted to people, you want to experiment. There is no supportive framework for that. Mm -hmm. And the law is telling you that it's even wrong to mm -hmm. think about a sexual relationship with your colleague, with your peer. Mm -hmm. So these are all the challenges that are presented by a law mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that restricts, completely restricts this kind of conduct uh, among young people. I have so much to say, but I want us to branch just a little bit. Mm -hmm. There was also a time in, in the frame of, sorry, the time frame of Kenyan politics and others that there was this Nimechil you know, did you saw the adverts, how people say, you know, mm -hmm, chill. Mm -hmm. The church came out and, and made a firm standing that we should abstain. Now we have people saying, mm -hmm. you know, use protection. Mm -hmm. What are we telling them right now? Mm -hmm. 16, under 18, let's just say under 18. And the, yes, they, they have these needs, but according to the law, it's wrong. And my, my friend, Ukishikwa, it's like you've, those guys are so disrespectful when they're arresting you. Mm -hmm. So what are we telling them? Are we telling them not a lot to have these feelings of, of lust, of desire? Are we telling them to, I didn't know how to put feelings on a pause, and I don't think you can. So how are we advising the youth? Uh, just as Lucy has said, mm -hmm. so the first thing we need is a, a serious legal reform mm -hmm. that looks at different uh, parameters and takes cognizance of the fact that uh, the young people are not homogeneous and they mature different levels. Mm -hmm. It's the same same country that uh, we've seen, oh, you have 24-year grandmother and, and all that. Wow. We've seen 13 years uh, giving birth. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the other thing, as I said earlier, is there is need for young people to get that comprehensive information around sexual and productive health and rights. Mm -hmm. And they should start from uh, the school level. And they, this, the information should be cascaded throughout their career life so mm -hmm. that they know, w we look at this is the kind of information that we need to package for young people at, the, at, at this particular age. Mm -hmm. And then progressively, we increase that information as we also work around uh, the legal reform mm -hmm. because studies have also shown even studies done by the government and mm -hmm. different government policies mm -hmm. they're recognizing that the age of sexual debut mm -hmm. is continuously decreasing mm -hmm. and therefore that means that more young people are having sex mm -hmm. we've seen new uh, i mean rising cases of uh, hiv infection mm -hmm. among young people mm -hmm. we also know there's there are increasing cases of young people who are procuring and safe abortion. Mm -hmm. And so all these issues undermine mm -hmm. proper growth mm -hmm. and development of young people because our health infrastructure does not match mm -hmm. the needs of the young people, their growth patterns, and mm -hmm. the kind of inf information package that needs to be given to young people over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And this does not only have now a bearing on uh, the social aspect, it mm -hmm. has a bearing on education, it has a bearing on the ability of young people to participate, it has a bearing on the economic ac aspect of young people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, if this is addressed, then you'll see there are multiple benefits that will accrue from addressing the right information mm -hmm. and giving young people the right to access their sexual and productive health and rights. So what we're saying, it's, it's difficult to be a teenager in Kenya who maybe is a new mom. Because you've said services might not be, you know, very open to them because it's, it's wrong, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So that means, ukshika bol, no jafika miaka, 18, that means either you keep it or you take it away. And if you take it away, that's illegal because, okay, in the constitution already it's illegal. It's not like other countries. But keeping it is also illegal. Is that what we're saying? Mm -hmm. So how do we move mm -hmm. forward from that? Mm -hmm. So two things. Uh, curious. So one, abortion is not illegal mm -hmm. in Kenya. It's restricted. Mm -hmm. 
So they are under the constitution, one can access an abortion to save the life of the mother mm. or to save their health or in case of an emergency. So only when recommended? Yes, so in, if in the opinion of a trained health provider, mm -hmm. they consider that your life, your health is in danger mm -hmm. or there's an emergency that warrants that intervention. Mm -hmm. Additionally, recently there was a judgment uh, of the High Court that uh, held that women and girls mm -hmm. who suffer sexual violence, rape, mm -hmm. can also access abortions. If in the opinion of a trained health provider, mm -hmm. such rape, such sexual violence poses a danger to their life, to their health, or you know, constitutes an emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, so just that one to, to just make the young people that are watching us mm -hmm. uh, to have that information. Then secondly, uh, to say that... Uh, to say that? I'm forgetting. Um, oh, it's okay, take your time. Mm -hmm. That um, when a young person mm -hmm. curiously mm -hmm. In our service provision, how our service, how our policy works, mm -hmm. and, and this is why it sends mixed messages to young people, mm -hmm. um, it works in such a way that a young person who gets pregnant mm -hmm. will be given preferential treatment mm -hmm. in our service. So an adolescent who's 13 mm -hmm. who gets pregnant can access services, can access information on mm -hmm. the pregnancy and all those things. Meanwhile, this mm -hmm. young person was not able to access information before that would have prevented them, the information pregnancy. and services mm -hmm. that would have prevented them mm -hmm. from getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. So those contradictions are what, they're they are sending mixed messages to young people, sending mixed messages to service providers, mm -hmm. and it's, those are the things that we need to harmonize to ensure that, at the very least, young people have access to information, mm -hmm. comprehensive, as Victor has said, scientifically accurate, mm -hmm. And here we are saying that young people are not homogenous, mm -hmm. they grow differently, uh, they have different needs and all that. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, that we have a health infrastructure that supports them to access services. When a young person presents mm -hmm. uh, to a health facility and they want a service, you know, they deserve to be listened to mm -hmm. and they deserve to be attended to. And what is more very important for us to be thinking about as we have this really big conversation mm -hmm is that the rate of HIV, for example, among uh, 15 to 24, 10 to 15, mm. it's increasing. Mm -hmm. uh, that is what the studies by the National AIDS Control Council and others are telling us. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, really, we, have to, we, we really have to um, uh, develop systems that mm -hmm. resonate, that mm -hmm. respond to these needs of young people before they become, you know, it becomes a catastrophe, it becomes an epidemic mm -hmm. uh, that we are trying to deal with after, you know, um, people are really suffering. I agree with you. And I also think that, I think it's also social change because if this 13-year-old gets pregnant, the whole society, first of all, are going to bash them. Why are you pregnant at 13? You're loose. Your legs are always open. Why are you not studying? Is there something wrong with you? You know, all that into now actually carrying the child. Mm -hmm. And again, I come back to the story, the Kilifi story, where all those pupils, not even students, pupils are pregnant. It's a story. It, it was, you know, magnificent for a few days, but then we forgot about it. But these girls gave birth. Now they're moms, you know. We don't know if they continue with school. We don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And on the same breath, transition is important. Mm -hmm. And it's something I feel, as a society, maybe we don't have as much. That means, my mother KCP, Nenda High School, no one is get, get telling you, like, you know, okay, you're going to grow, you're going to be different. If you didn't have your menses yet in primary, then you're definitely going to find them somewhere in high school. What to do with your body? You know, you're going to be, if you're going to be in a boarding school, that means you're going to be away. How are you going to be feeling? How are you going to be relating? The hormones, the, there's things going on. When you finish your high school, you go to campus. Now that's a whole different ball game. There's mm -hmm. so much more freedom. And they're not yet still telling us. All we're focusing on is kusoma. Soma, upate, graduate, upate kazi poa. But we're not teaching them how to transition. Is there something we need to know in accordance to the law about our transition? As the, our rights from when we're in primary, when we're at that young age, when we come to high school, do our rights expand? Do we have more rights or they become more limited when we go to campus? Are, they, are we no longer, you know, a sensitive group? Now we are big, we're grown up, so leave us alone. We don't have any rights. What's going on? Um. 
I think as I alluded to earlier mm. is that uh, we need to have a comprehensive, well-packaged sexual and reproductive health and rights. Mm. And uh, my colleague Lucy said that is scientific mm -hmm. in nature. Mm -hmm. And we look at young people through all these levels. Mm -hmm. So we also need to accept that as a society, mm -hmm. A young person of today mm -hmm. is more exposed than a young person of 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we have more and more access to information from peers, from the internet, and other different sources. So, I, as much as we are not talking about all these, we are not giving young people information. They are getting information elsewhere. The big question is mm -hmm. the information they are getting elsewhere. Is it the correct information? Is it consistent? Mm -hmm. And therefore, and that's why you see parents will be more concerned about you, don't do this, don't do this, but you're never told why that should not be done. Mm -hmm. The government does not provide also that information mm -hmm. in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. Then when you get to the university, mm -hmm. And you realize, aha, now I have all that freedom. <laughs> but we, also, we are also forgetting that mm -hmm. we have so many young people who are left behind mm -hmm. in the process. Mm -hmm. In that, they are not able to get the right information. They did not make the right uh, decision. Some of them are mothers at all. Mm -hmm. Some of them are having different life challenges and struggles. Mm -hmm. And so, if you look at it, you'll see there are a lot of boys who transition into high school mm -hmm. and then later to the university mm -hmm. than girls. Mm -hmm. Why? Because then we have a society that the information is designed uh, while all these young people need information, mm -hmm. but women and girls have more challenges that than the boys. Mm -hmm. And so, we also need to take that into consideration and mm -hmm. give all this information and have a very clear transition plan. If young people, for example, get pregnant, mm -hmm. then they need to be allowed to go back to school mm -hmm. to continue with their education. Mm -hmm. But then you also have to do the legal reforms mm -hmm. so that they can be able to access uh, contraception and this will also allow them mm -hmm. to delay the instances where they can be able to again have children during this let's yeah. just stay there for a second what like we give them access to contraceptives you think that's a good idea it is a right it's a right <laughs> it's not just an idea it's a right it's a right wow but as lucy said mm -hmm. we have also a restrictive mm -hmm. legal environment mm -hmm. so you also need to reform that mm -hmm. yeah but Lucy will comment more on the legal <laughs> part of it. Keep trying us yeah. to Lucy talk yeah. to me, Lucy. No, and I think just to add, mm -hmm. the, the, so here is, the thing is, we are living like ostriches. Mm -hmm. And this problem is not just in Kenya. Eh? Mm -hmm. So I've interacted with our partners and with stakeholders in Uganda, in mm -hmm. Tanzania, in Malawi, in many other countries. And Victor will tell you because mm -hmm. he works directly with young people. These are the problems that are present in those contexts. Mm -hmm. So if young people are having sexual engagements with each other, mm -hmm. how do you, so the, the point is how do we create an environment mm -hmm. that supports young people mm -hmm. through this transition? Um, and that, and that does not necessarily mean that if we, for example, provide information mm -hmm. that young people are going to be overly active sexually, mm -hmm. or that if we enable them to access services, that they are now just going to do whatever they want to do. Nitabu, in fact, if you told someone in the village that you're going to start talking about sex to a child, like, what are you teaching them? Exactly. Is that what you want them to start doing? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to create an environment where young people are supported mm -hmm. and where we are working towards positive sexual and reproductive health outcomes mm -hmm. so that these young people can occupy their place in the society and can begin contributing. Mm -hmm. You know, we are supporting them to grow, mm -hmm. um, to grow effectively, and then to contribute to mm -hmm. the, you know, to the country's political, social, legal, cultural, all those mm -hmm. contexts. Mm -hmm. But where we are at the moment is we view young people mm -hmm. as individuals that 
have limited rights. Mm -hmm. And we are stuck in that limited rights framework mm -hmm. without recognizing that we have, the society has changed. Mm -hmm. That today, you only have to young, have young people in your house mm -hmm. to realize that, oh, something was happening because they will not be with you every day, That's every time, every, every minute of that time that they're in your house. Mm -hmm. So how are we supporting young people mm -hmm. to access the right information? How are we supporting them to access services? Because if a young person mm -hmm. comes to a facility and is asking for services, mm -hmm. they, there should be a recognition that this young person understands mm -hmm. what it is they want to do and they should be supported and not meant, made to feel like they are delinquent, they are behaving contrary to morals of the society. That just chases them away, but mm -hmm. it doesn't make them not stop mm -hmm. to do, it doesn't make them stop to well, doing what, what, what they were doing. Mm. Exactly. Oh your gosh, your yeah. behavior, it and to chini amaji, but they'll continue doing it. Mm -hmm. So we really need to think mm -hmm. critically as a society about how we create an environment where young people feel supported, mm -hmm. where young people can walk up confidently to their parents, parents and ask them, mm -hmm. mom, I'm having these feelings for this guy. Mm -hmm how do I deal with it? Mm -hmm. Or mom, I really feel like I need to do things this way. Mm -hmm. How can I do it? Those are not the conversations that people are currently having with their kids. I don't, there are some people who hardly ever have conversation. Precisely. And I, I don't want to, I feel like I'm in the age of being a parent. So I don't want to start saying your parents are not doing this. I, whatever your parents are doing to, to, you know, put food on the table for you or to help you, that's that should be applauded first of all, okay, mm -hmm. congratulations, mm -hmm. good job. But what happens when, okay, I want us to just deviate from the pregnancy situation, but I believe everything you've said because I, it's come to my attention that ladies or girls rather would rather contract a, a, an STD or an STI than be pregnant mm -hmm. because at ambe anini watu, ama atenda kwambia mamini. So it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But what other health issues maybe do you focus on? There's been this HPV kind of situation going back and forth where they've told us, okay, get vaccinated as early as you can. Now, if you do, there might be problems in the future. When such things come up, do you spearhead, tell them, okay, no, we know what's up. We know this is good for you and we know this is bad for you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the discussion on those kind of HPV and all that, mm -hmm. I think it's important for young people to know, or for the people watching this show to know, mm -hmm. that we actually have an instrument, a legal document, mm -hmm. an international legal document that Kenya signed on to, mm -hmm. that um, uh, has a provision in there about a right for women to, women and girls to benefit from scientific progress. Mm -hmm. Now we know as a country or as globally as the world, cancer mm -hmm. is a leading, it's a leading cause of it death. Is, yeah. And uh, cervical cancer causes a lot of deaths mm -hmm. among women and girls. Mm -hmm. And so the conversation we should be having as a country mm -hmm. should really be led, driven by individuals that are experienced, mm -hmm. individuals, scientists who know, who can tell us, give us accurate, again we go back to the accurate information, mm -hmm. accurate information on this kind of, on this vaccine. Mm -hmm. What are the benefits? Um, what are the side effects, if at all? Mm -hmm. And how, how has the vaccine contributed to reduction in cases of cervical cancers in countries where it has been rolled out successfully? Mm -hmm. So it's important, I think, for us to move away from the information that's currently mm -hmm. in our WhatsApp groups, in our yeah. Facebook walls and all that, into a conversation that is really about mm -hmm. scientifically, this is a good intervention mm -hmm. or this, is, this intervention is meant, it's geared at this and this, mm -hmm. and that's not what we are currently hearing. Mm -hmm. So right now everybody has said, no, mm -hmm. my child will not have that vaccine because this person said this and this, but Here, mm -hmm. we are not necessarily mm -hmm receiving accurate information that can help us make informed choices mm -hmm. that will benefit our children. Yeah. We are just going with whatever is being told, yeah. the new hype. Yes. I have a special question for you. Yes, Lucy please. said earlier that you deal a lot with young people. 
Boy child and I know me wapi because that's what tell you. Girl child are conash their periods or oh, hygiene or oh, streaming ba nini. But what is the boy child suffering from? What is the problem? How what are the you know, the most cases you receive? Uh well, there are several cases mm -hmm. the issues that uh, the boy child is uh, suffering from. Mm -hmm. uh, we have so many we have increasing incidences of depression among the boy child oh. because mm -hmm. most of them they don't have anyone to talk to mm -hmm. they don't want I mean they don't open up easily because the society has made them feel that uh, mm -hmm. which is a totally I mean it's just a funny kind of uh, narrative mm -hmm. within society but we also have uh, you also have the uh, the boy child in terms of uh, those who have also impregnated the the ladies mm -hmm. and uh, I mean young women mm -hmm. and uh, girls mm -hmm. and there is also that now the need to be responsible mm -hmm. and uh, which Lucy is more qualified to uh, comment on that around those still in prison mm -hmm. we have uh, all this burden on the boy child and you've seen a lot of them they drop out of school mm -hmm. they are into the border border business mm -hmm. and, and, and all that and uh, other than just the boy child mm -hmm. you will also realize that there are also increased infection especially on in HIV mm -hmm. infection among teen to teen mm -hmm. and also those who are under 24 mm -hmm. they are infecting each other mm -hmm. and so all these uh, problems they are aggravated by just this lack of information mm -hmm. and this moves on for a period of time and then you realize over a period of time then you get to a situation where uh, these young people mm -hmm. economically mm -hmm. they can't support mm -hmm. politically they're not participating in mm -hmm. in the required I mean they're not meaningfully participating mm -hmm. socially they're absent yeah so we all there is need mm -hmm. to support but it's not only about supporting boy child mm -hmm. there is need to support both of them so that they have that information mm -hmm. and they work together towards a better future mm -hmm. yeah. do you get cases okay i'm sure they're there but they're not very highlighted in in the media you know social or otherwise of gentlemen being raped because there's a whole situation, whole mm -hmm. narrative around rape, and it's usually just girls, you know? And the story changes, or oh, she's lying, or oh, she's telling the truth, or oh, it's a very high profile person, you can't talk about it. But it's, there's a situation where boy child comes and tells you, oh, this happened and I don't know what to do. And how do you deal with that? <laughs> Victor <laughs> is not even <laughs> attempting the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> talk to me, Lucy. Have you come across such an incident? Uh, I think anecdotally, mm -hmm. there is that information that exists mm -hmm. out there. That is the reality. I think the challenge is, like we said, we are a society that that doesn't encourage boys and men to come out and to speak out when they are violated. But these violations are there. Mm -hmm. Young people, men, young men adolescent boys are getting raped mm -hmm. and you just need to walk to any gender violence recovery center to get this kind of information um, yeah but they are so full of ntambi and iniwatu it's very mm -hmm. difficult to go i understand even just to speak out and say this happened to me mm -hmm. so we, we gotta counsel them yes so it's a recalibration that we need to do as a society mm -hmm. and it can just start in your small sphere of influence for example how if you are a parent how are you raising your your children, you know, to embrace things like positive masculinity. How mm -hmm. are you raising your boys and girls mm -hmm. to inculcate this this kind of um, mm -hmm. positive engagement by mm -hmm. both girls and boys, mm -hmm. so that they know that that happened to you, it was wrong, mm -hmm. and you were hurt, and it's okay mm -hmm. to be in pain, and we can now chart a recovery plan for you while we prosecute the person who violated you. Mm. That's a recalibration that will take a long time, but I think in our small sphere of influence, we can start 
building that, creating that environment mm -hmm. um, that will result in a building of trust so that people feel free to come and to report mm -hmm. even how we structure our health system. Is it structured in our, is it manned by workers mm -hmm who are accepting, who mm -hmm. acknowledge that these are problems that are happening in the society and not individuals that will laugh at young people when they, a young man, when he goes to report that I was exactly. 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 Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's not happening. But mm -hmm. do we really have a health system that is, that is doing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, um, we need to really work on our society to make people understand mm -hmm. that sexual violence, mm -hmm. whoever it's happening to, is wrong, mm -hmm. it is illegal, and it should be punished in the toughest way possible. Mm -hmm. And whoever the victim or the survivor was mm -hmm. should feel comfortable to access, you know, to first of all report mm -hmm. and to go to a health facility to seek treatment. Immediately. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, to to be supported to access this other psychosocial support that will work on the trauma and you know minimize the impact of the sexual violence on, on them, the long-term impact of the sexual violence. All right. Victor, today is Man Crush Monday, so we put a lot of emphasis on our kings. So would you like to conclude the topic for us? What would you like to tell the youth out there? So it is important for young people to get uh, the right information that will help them in terms of uh, making informed decisions. And uh, for them to get to this, uh, that point, there has to be a supportive environment mm -hmm. uh, at the society level, um, at the legislative level, and also within our health uh, system. And as a society, we must work together in ensuring that we continuously build the capacity of our young people to be able to participate and meaningfully contribute mm -hmm. to the social, economical, mm -hmm. and all other spheres of development in this country. Thank mm. you. Are you going to do an exam? Yeah. Mm? He's done it very well. <laughs> okay, according to me, I have learned a few things from this class. Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Number one, dry spell will not kill you, please. All right, just be safe. Be careful out there. The more partners you have, the more at risk you are. Uh, seek out knowledge, man. Say, just find things out. Have a curious mind. It's, it's for your own good. We're together so far. Mm -hmm. Be compassionate. Be kind to people who've been going through things or who are going through things. Be gentle with people who are suffering from depression because that is a mental health disorder, right? It's, it's, it's legit. Just be kind. Be nice, okay? And how can we reach out to you guys if we have a question? Uh, so if anyone has a question, they want to reach out to the Center for Reproductive Rights, our website is www.reprorights.org <laughs> so they can get our contact details in there. Mm -hmm. Um, they can, yeah, so our contact deta details are on the website. All right. Yes. So we're free to access any type of information should we just come straight to you, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. guys, form, go to their website again, www.reprorights.org. I am Shambiwa. But in case you missed this interview, you've just joined Y in the morning, you can catch the repeat. Okay, no, there's no repeat today. But we will upload it on YouTube. So that's at Y254 channel as well. We got to wind this.